Today, I'm on the receiving end of a new treatment that we're gonna start offering here to all our stem cell patients. And I'm joined today by Dr. Louie Yu, who's developed this EBO2 system. EBO2 stands for extracorporeal uh, blood ozonation and oxygenation. And this is a really ingenious system. What it does is it combines three modalities. It combines ozonation of the blood, filtration, as well as ultraviolet blood irradiation. So Dr. Yu, tell me a little bit about the system and what we're, what we're doing here. Sure, the, the EBO2 system is a very simple system. It's a, it's a modified dialysis system. And what we're doing is we're, as you can see, we're, we're taking blood from our patient, running it through our pumping mechanism into our filter. The filter then grabs all the fat, proteins, and waste products, and we filter that out of the blood, separate it out through the, our, our specific membrane. Show them that, show them the... And then, so we'll, we will remove some of the proteins and waste products through this canister over here, and it comes out into, into a different waste canister. Uh, then the, the ozone is then, the oxygen is then introduced into the filtration mechanism. The blood gas is mixed here in the chamber and then get returned back to our patient in our return line. So we can see the contrast of blood from when it comes out of the body versus when it gets filtered, cleansed, and then put back into the system. So there is, there is a marked contrast. And so what's, what's unique about our system is we are actually recirculating the blood. We're using two 18 gauge catheters uh, so we take blood out one side, put it through our filter, filter it, cleanse it, oxygenate it, uh, attach our LED blood irradiation uh, device to it, irradiate the blood as well uh, with UV, and then put it back into the system so that we can disinfect the blood of, of different pathogens as well. So ozone acting as a, as a natural disinfectant along with the LED, LED ultraviolet radiation also has a secondary a disinfectant mechanism, which gives us double strength. So we do it for bacteria and, and different viruses, uh, Lyme disease, molds, um, yeast, fungi, and uh, all known microbes get basically get destroyed by two different mechanisms of action. One is ozonation, oxidation, and there is, uh, is UV radiation. That's great. And just to go into a little more detail about the filtration aspect. So the filtration aspect is pretty, pretty amazing. This, this, the filter here is a hollow fiber system. And so we're actually using the filter two different ways. We're actually using the, there's, there's a bundle of fibers that are inside this container here, and that acts as a lipophoresis trap. So basically, the, the, it's, a, it's, it's, it's like likened to a bunch of straws that are pushed together, and the fat has to go through that screen, and then it gets stopped by the hollow fiber filters themselves. And then when, within each tube of each hollow fiber are multiple pores. And the pores are so small, only certain proteins and waste products will make it through the pore, and we actually create a negative pressure. And as you can see here, there are proteins coming out. You see, the, if you can see the flow here, these are actually proteins, waste products, and um, uh, creatinine, uh, glucose, heavy metals coming out, uh, out of this membrane down here. Uh, as, as we use the filter mechanism a couple different ways. And then we'll, what we will do is if there's uh, not enough absorption of the ozone, we'll actually turn on a vacuum extractor to create more negative pressure to assist in the filtration through the, through the micropores. And at the same time, we're then, we're then extracting out the excess ozone gas so you don't have to breathe it in, in the ambient uh, environment around you. So there's a couple different ways that we're, that we're disposing of a couple of different things, and we've combined them to increase filtration mechanism and then to actually clean the air as well. Great, and we don't have the ultraviolet blood irradiation set up, but we're expecting that unit in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, the unit's coming in very shortly. It's, it, it's, it's the final stages of development uh, by the company is actually, they're, they're done now, which was assisted by a doctor named Joe Perita. And Dr. Perita was instrumental in helping us develop the new, uh, the new uh, ultraviolet radiation sleeve that will actually go over this these tubings here and so then after the blood is filtered there will be a sleeve of ultraviolet radiation that will then affect and then additionally disinfect the blood before it goes back to the patient. The same Joe Perita that taught me to aspirate bone marrow 10 years ago. Correct the same the same famous mm -hmm. uh, and wonderful Dr. Perita who... And then the blood irradiation the ultraviolet blood irradiation mm -hmm. other than killing microbes and mm -hmm. viruses 
does it exert any other activities on the blood? You know, it seems that it increases stem cell activity and it increases the, the anti-inflammatory and then the rejuvenative, rejuvenative effects of stem cell therapy, which I think is pretty amazing because we're using frequency and light to stimulate the body to repair itself. Great, great. Well, I'm pretty excited about this. I'm, I've been waiting to get it in here and I'm, I've been anxiously awaiting Dr. Yu to come teach us how to use it. And now we're gonna be offering it to all our stem cell patients, people undergoing stem cell procedures. Uh, we'll have the option of having this treatment done to them. And then also for, you know, for locals as well, Park City folks who just want to do it for health optimization.